Those of you living in Europe might already have noticed that it was this part of the year again, Embedded World in Nuremberg. And this year I've been there as almost every year and I believe that process computers have really changed the shape of the industry. What this means for you and what the highlights of the show were, I'm going to show you here in a series of short mini clips. First of all, I have to apologize. There will be no videos this time because I simply wasn't able to do filming while I was photographing. Let us start out with the most anticipated bit of news. Rode and Schwarz have decided to go somewhat low end. I've got a bit of a hands on clip from the scope, which sadly is a bit noisy. You are seeing here the new Rode and Schwarz entry level product line. We've got here the RTB 2004, it's a digital oscilloscope. Here we've got their power supply, and here we've got a spectrum analyzer. And as one can see, there is a bit of commonality between the three units. And the interesting thing about this one is that it also has a pattern generator, which I'm trying to play around with if they let me. So you see here, pattern generator. And you see you can put in the patterns here, for example, let's simulate an SPI. Ooh, and can I also specify data which is to be transferred or not? The pattern generator basically is not able to generate arbitrary patterns on its own. If you want to have SPI, I2C or something like that, you need to do it by hand. Another thing you need to keep in mind are the crazily expensive options, a trend which also continues with their newly introduced spectral analyzer. And here the spectral analyzer, what's the, the border frequency? So it's one gigahertz maximum only. Yes. Because I'm seeing here a center frequency of 1.4. Can upgrade it up to two gigahertz. So there is an option to go for two gigahertz. Three gigahertz. To three. Okay. Rigo also introduced something new. The unit you see here is a DC load, which is said to cost significantly less than 500 euros, which IMHO is really, really good value for this kind of unit. In addition to that, the DSO 2000 and DSO 4000 lines will be merged. The unit you see here is a DSO 2000 with four channels, which, however, is branded as a DSO 4000. And another nice thing is this card from CompMau. It allows you to keep recycling existing ISA hardware. Wow, guys, please, before we get back to electronics, support me. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell your friends. I need your help to grow. Between the two of us, everybody loves these little OLED displays. And because the embedded world traditionally also takes place in parallel with other vendors, there was a few companies such as Wisechip, which are producing a series of new SPI OLEDs, some of which you've just seen here. And by the way, of course, Noritake e-tron also was around. Power supplies built up out of discrete components seem to be an endangered spaces. The future seems to belong to power supply modules, which include capacitors, coils and everything on the block. Another funny upgrade is in the PSOC series. The PSOC 6 is more powerful in that it has a dual core architecture. While Mauser et al. of course also had booths at the Embedded World, the attention was on the German retailer Konrad. They are basically planning to open an AliExpress-like platform where all suppliers, however, have to be ISO certified. Another fun thing I have to mention is Ubuntu. They are now going into the marketplace. And their target is to provide embedded marketplace services. For example, as you can see here, they are working on one for the Orange Pi process computer. I was around sourcing cases for a little project and I figured out that some companies, such as the one I'm showing you here, if you take a hundred cases or so, 
is able to customize them for less than $10 a pop. And if you want a metal case, well, there's a company in the Czech Republic which has got you covered. And finally, an interesting thing which I could not not show is Apraplast. Anybody of you who is experienced in PVC probably already guesses how these cases are produced. In the first step, you've got normal plates of plastic which are cut and then they are bent using a hot wire. Should any one of you feel like handling USB 3, Microchip wants to be your go-to partner. They provide an IC which makes creating Ethernet dongles really easy and another one takes care of both routing and battery charging according to the PP 1.2 specification. Of course, FTDI are around too. They offer a variety of interface chips for USB 3 and also plan to spin off their embedded display division. STM, on the other hand, as you see in my t-shirt, was introducing a huge lot of new evaluation kits dedicated to topics such as NFC and other things. And by the way, their fan store was a really, really useful life hack as if you purchased anything from the fan store, any additional components would also be shipped free, even if you didn't qualify for Mauser's normal free shipping. Another interesting thing is the PCB pool. They now also mount components on boards. Sadly, this is quite expensive. For a calculation for 50, and in one for two pieces, the main costs usually lay in the pick and place process. But if you need a prototype in a relative hunch, this is definitely quite interesting, even though you need to expect a turnaround day of at least 20 workdays. And with that, one question remains. Would I go to Embedded World again? And my answer to this question is a resounding yes. For one simple reason. The trade show is really, really cheap. And you need to keep one thing in mind, having a contact at one or more manufacturers and distributors really can be worth its weight in gold. So maybe I'll see you all there next year. Thanks.